worth dying for. According to the World Health Organization, a staggering 77% of Nigerian women use bleaching agents. This is where it's the highest percentage worldwide. Okay? This should get our alarm bells ringing for what is clearly a bleaching epidemic. In comparison, we have women in Togo at just 59, well, that's not just, at 59%, and in Senegal at 27%. What exactly is going on? Now, these statistics are for women, but trust me, a lot of men are bleaching as well. As a skin specialist, I'm bombarded with loads of phone calls almost every day. People requesting bleaching services. They want creams, they want chemical baths, injectables, just about everything. I'll tell you a funny story. One morning, a lady called me from East Africa. And she talked about how she had hyperpigmentation and some scarring, and she needed some products to help her. But her undertone sounded like she wanted to bleach, so I sent her to my website. I said, you know what, please, could you read two articles from my website before we chat about this? One was the bleaching craze, and the other, glutathione and bleaching. So she called me back the next morning. You're black! She just started yelling at me. You're black! How could you help me when you're black when I want to bleach? So I said, fine. This is exactly what I was talking about. I often wonder why people bleach. From my interaction with patients, friends, and some acquaintances, what tops the list is they want to be more attractive. But I ask myself sometimes if I'm part of the problem. Do I prefer to see, say, women of lighter skin advertising products that I buy? Now, the media drives this negativity further. As we see that in most advertisements or advertisements, they use lighter-skinned individuals. In the movie and entertainment industry, the lighter-skinned individuals are chosen over the darker-skinned ones. Is this something you've noticed? Yes. So with this negativity, we have the desperation where people go to extremes to be able to secure jobs or to get roles in the industry, they go to extremes to start bleaching, even if there are people that are not interested in bleaching. Okay. Now, colorism is also known as shadism. And what it describes is discrimination against darker-skinned individuals in the same racial or ethnic group. So the lighter-skinned people are favored over the darker-skinned ones. And it cross, cuts across the board. It affects men and women. In my opinion, colorism is worse than racism. Your own race, you're being discriminated against. There's no doubt that lighter skin attracts in a predominantly dark society. But people with low esteem tend to buy into this. And as a matter of fact, are now pushed into bleaching for several factors. Some are economic because they're looking for jobs, feeling that if they were lighter, they would get the jobs. Now, they, these, um, this pressure could lead to psychological problems. Now, if you feel demoralized because of your complexion, sometimes in extremes, some people go through depression and even suicidal thoughts. This, uh, the media tends to perpetuate this and encourage the harmful bleaching. So we have psychological and physical damage as a result. We have cases of addiction, which is mainly a bleaching addiction, mainly in teenagers and young adults. Now, I'll give you an example again. A patient came to my clinic with open sores from burns from a bleaching cream she had started using recently. And she also had stretch marks all over her face, and also all over her body, in places where stretch marks don't usually occur. So I told her, you know what? To start the healing, you have to stop the bleaching. The first thing she said was, oh my goodness, I cannot stop, because if I stop, I'll get darker, and people will think I'm suffering. <laughs> That's really funny. And, um, you know, she's somebody who left the clinic, and I never saw her again. 
So I wonder what has become of her. Because it's possible she's fallen prey to people who take advantage of people's insecurities and offer them every bleaching agent imaginable. I often wonder if her skin has fallen off by now. <laughs> so she sought on professional help for sure. Now, we find that a lot of teenagers and young adults get into this practice in a copycat fashion. They see people doing it, they too want to feel that, okay, maybe I'll be successful. And in some countries, they feel that when you're lighter for women, it'll be easier for you to find a husband. So that pushes people further into this. I, I don't know if it's, it's correct, but <laughs> it pushes people, and people become really desperate. Now, I feel that the older ones, the adults, who are to encourage people to accept who they are, are the ones even pushing the bleaching creams onto these people. There's a major challenge we face in this society, and that's the fact that everything can be bought over the counter. We self-medicate. I'm sure you're guilty. Everybody goes to the pharmacy if they have a problem. Oh, I'll just buy malaria pills and this. So that's why even toxic, dangerous, even prescription-strength bleaching creams can be bought over the counter in this country. There's really no regulation or control, and as a result, adults and children are damaged. Now, I'll tell you about a patient. There was a mother who was concerned about her young daughter. She was a young adult. She said the daughter had become reclusive and that she just stayed online, buying bleaching products from all over the world. They were shipping them in, from injectables to tablets to harsh creams, and she was terribly damaged. But she couldn't stop the practice. So this is another sign that it is an addiction in essence. So when she came into my clinic, I was in my consulting room, and the reception is a distance away. But I could smell this radioactive tank type of odor right from the reception before she arrived. And this is because I've seen a lot of patients with this similar odor because they come for help, and the majority of them run away. They do not want help. So with her, the first thing she said when she saw me, doctor, you're not bleached and you look nice. So I told her, you know what? It's not about your color, it's about the health of your skin, and that is what should be your focus. She went on to tell me that, fine, she understands how healthy skin is important, but she can't help herself. So I could see that she was in a situation that was beyond her control. And she just felt helpless and hopeless. What we did, we put her on a series of counseling sessions with a psychiatrist. Then we had medical products for her, as well as you know, supplements to help her stop. And within a year, she had actually stopped the bleaching and had improved remarkably. Another man, um, a husband dragged his wife to my clinic to beg me to stop her from bleaching because she had bleached herself to like almost as white as paper and he didn't like it. The woman, of course, was looking in the air like, you know, she didn't care. She really wanted to continue. So I talked to her about the hazards and after a long conversation, she decided to stop and the healing occurred in about a year. She's, she's much improved, but not there yet. Are parents sending the wrong messages to their children? If parents are bleaching and discriminating against possibly their darker-skinned children, because this happens in some families where the parents favor the lighter-skinned children over the darker-skinned children. So if they're not good role models, what, where lies the future for generations to come? Now, for allowing this kind of thoughts to affect children later in life, I feel that parents, teachers, guardians, uncles, aunts, family members should instill, when children are still young and impressionable, a sense of self-pride and, um, you know, believing that all skin tones are beautiful and whatever they're born with is best for them. I have two young daughters. One is darker than I am and the other one is lighter. And I've always told them that you should never let anyone tell you you have a problem with your skin tone. There was a funny thing that happened. One morning, my younger daughter ran out of the bathroom hysterically. She was screaming. 
Mommy, I'm scared. I used my sister's sponge and I don't want to get light skinned. I'm so scared. She was hysterical. Like, it took over a minute to calm her down. But at that point, I knew that I had um, at least instilled that, right? So I was very happy about her reaction. There was a patient who came to my clinic once with her nine month old baby. She said I needed to bleach my baby because the baby was light skinned when she was born but now she's darker. So I said, look, the child's color comes in within a year. What exactly are you trying to do to your child? She said, nope, that if I'm not going to help her, she's going to the markets and she will buy whatever is recommended for her children. So this is such a, a, a deep problem. How has the society degenerated to this point where you will now harm your children. But I like to think that many people go into this practice without knowing what the hazards are. There's a country in West Africa that I think the darkest thing happens in. I read a report recently where expectant mothers were taking tablets to bleach their unborn children. This is, I mean, the most extreme I've ever heard of. And I feel this is criminal. If it is, I mean, I, I really don't know what else to say if it has taken root to that level where you're trying to not only damage your health, because you don't even know what's in these so-called products that are for bleaching the baby in utero. It is really, really disturbing. Now, this discrimination becomes worse when employers and the media keep up with it. Now, you find certain jobs where they will insist, oh, it's only light-skinned women we want, and the darker-skinned women are pushed aside, and sometimes light-skinned men too. Because in the media, I hear that the situations where producers are concerned about the lighting, so they want lighter-skinned men and women to make it easier for them. Now, the discrimination goes from women I mean, the, the effects of the discrimination goes from women with popping veins. You've seen them with popping veins and broken blood vessels, thinking that that's a sign of beauty. And all the way down to bleaching children, and I think the darkest would be bleaching, the, trying to bleach the fetus, because there's no scientific backing to that. I would like to think people trying this are smart, and that they would actually read labels on what they're taking. How could you, during pregnancy, that is such a delicate period where you're advised not to take even the most basic medication sometimes, and you do this? Well, tablets are not the only things people use to bleach. If you go to supermarkets, there are sections that are, I mean, the most attractive you know, busiest section of many supermarkets is where the plethora of bleaching creams are. You see all sorts of colors and the labels with current buzzwords like kojic acid, lemon, glutathione, and you, hear, you see labels like light up your skin in, in uh, two days or white overnight. These are things that are seen. And you see women, they're clamoring for the products, fighting for products, and actually wheeling out cartloads full of bleaching products. Apart from those which are supposedly prepared in the right manner, we have the mixed creams. Now, with mixed creams, you have unqualified, unprofessional individuals mixing creams in their backyards. Now, these creams could contain anything from rat's droppings to gutter water, and then very dangerous and toxic ingredients like mercury, steroids, peroxides for bleaching hair, hair relaxers, household bleach, and scoring agents used for cleaning your toilets. These are things that are possible ingredients. Now, I'll tell you something too. A patient called me once. She said, oh, that um, she called to ask if tretinoin could be used to treat stretch marks. And I said, oh, that's possible, but it would take a while. Then she hung up. Ten minutes later, she called again. She said, 
Uh, as a matter of fact, I didn't tell you the truth about what happened to me. I bought this glow cream. I live in Europe. I came back to Nigeria on holiday. I became very dark. And somebody told me I can maintain or get my complexion back in no time with these creams. So she confessed that she now had stretch marks all over her body, including her face. So you can see how hazardous many of these products are because you have unlicensed. And then we also have cases of people using creams and breaking out massively the day after. Boils, not acne, like boils because of the infected material inside the creams. Popular is the chemical bath. With a chemical bath, the individual is steeped in a bath full of toxic bleaching agents so that they will have rapid bleaching. And this is usually very popular before a party or a major event. Then we have the injectables. Injectables have become the trending practice of bleaching at this moment. It is usually glutathione combined with high-dose vitamin C and is given as an intravenous or intramuscular cocktail. Now, glutathione being used for the purpose of bleaching is not a regulated practice. It should only be administered by doctors and nurses if you, um, because the thing about glutathione, it is a drug. And non-licensed professionals can administer to you and it could actually lead to your death because it is actually something that could give you the reactions that would not be pleasant. Vitamin C in itself, in high doses, can lead to kidney stones. So I know a lot of us feel vitamin C is so nice and yummy and it's something that's safe, but in high doses, vitamin C is by no means safe. Well, it's not all bad. We have chemical reasons to bleach skin. I mean, medical reasons to bleach skin. If we have patients with scarrings and, you know, scarring and burns, we give prescription products which we monitor over time to help get rid of the scarring and the burns. But then um, there's also a, a condition called vitiligo where some choose to go through the depigmentation process where all the leftover melanin is bleached out completely so that they will have a uniform complexion. It's, it's, it's an optional treatment when a, a, a product called um, Benoquin is used for that. I went to a market once and a lot of men were scurrying around. One came up to me, he said, Come, I have something for you. Don't you want to look like Oibo? I said, well, Oibo, well, for those that don't know, Oibo means Caucasian in Nigeria. He said he can give me the injections right here. You know, we just sit down, I'll give you an injection, and you see the magic and wonders that this will, you know, create for you, and you'll be very attractive. So, you know, I just shook my head. It's so unfortunate because we find unlicensed professionals giving these injections. In the marketplace, in shops, under the bridge, on the roadside. That is where glutathione injections are being administered. Many people go into the bleaching practices without knowing the implications. Now, we talked about the stretch marks, and that's because the skin becomes so thinned out from the um, steroids in particular. When you thin it out, it loses its strength and integrity. And if you need surgical sutures for an operation, the, the sutures will not hold. So you can imagine what will happen to somebody who requires emergency surgery, and they're not able to stitch the person back. We also have problems like skin cancer, kidney failure, and bone marrow damage. Now, with the kidney failure, a patient may need to go see uh, a nephrologist for dialysis. What I, the message I want to give to you all is that the best skin tone for you is what you were born with, right? You should know that once your skin is healthy, that is what is most important. Is bleaching worth dying for? You could lose your life, your looks, and your health. And I would ultimately say, is bleaching really worth dying for? I don't think so. What do you think?